Hi, and welcome to Tree Savers. My name is Jamie Longo, and I'm going to give you a tour of our lab. Um, this one is the second in a two-part series so far where we're showing you the new Tree, tree Savers lab. Um, this is the jars, and that's what we're going to focus on today because we actually have the beetles in stock now. So there's two jars missing, and I'm going to take you in the other room and show you where they are and how we process them. Okay, we'll start on this side. We have two containers here, and uh, these are males and females. We distinguish by the pretty little stickers on top. Um, we have 62 males. That's because we need actually 10 females and 5 males in every jar. So we always end up with a surplus of males because we have 15 jars running right now. So here's our males, or here's our females. We only have 6 left, so we're counting on them carry us through in case there's any dead in our jars. Uh, here are our picks, and I'm going to get one out for you to see. This one looks good. These are the best branches we can find covered with hemlock woolly adelgid. Um, each one of these sacks is loaded with woolly adelgid eggs. Some of these in this container are a little less ideal, and that's why they're set aside because in here the wool has already broken open in places and there are crawlers coming out. We want the highest density of eggs so that we can have the highest density of beetle eggs when we take them out. Um, interlaced actually in between each of these twigs is a piece of gauze. It's about one and a half by one and a half inches and there's three of them total. We have those so that we can count the eggs when we take them out of the jar. We only let them actually reproduce for one full week so that they don't develop into crawlers. So we take the gauze out, count the eggs, and then we actually multiply by two because we assume that there are at least 50% of eggs laid on the branches themselves. So next I'm going to show you what one of our egg charts looks like. We have last week's and the weeks before numbers because we have finally begun um, its pre-production. We're trying to see what our numbers are, how reliable our food sources are, so that we can continue into successful production for sales. The first week, our numbers were actually astronomical for the first week of production. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven different sources of food here. These are all distinguished by an abbreviation so we can keep track on the jars. And these are all of our gauze pieces, top, middle, and bottom from the pick. These are the multiplied by two, and our estimated numbers for that week were 3,662, which is approximately 244 per jar, and that was out of only 15 jars running. So that sounded good, and then I did the jars last week, and we more than doubled our number. So whatever we're doing so far is definitely working, and I mean, I, I haven't seen results like this in... December and January ever. So we're looking at a really good food year and a really good production year. Uh, just to show you what we do when we get those gauze pieces out, we will come in here and we're going to add them into a cage, a rearing cage. And I'll show you a picture of one of those after before we end. And here we have jar number one, jar number two, jar number three and I distinguish where the gauze or the branches came from and put the food over here. So if we ever open up a box and we don't get 500 adult beetles, then we can at least go back and see was there a contaminated food source, you know, who did the jar, you know, anything like that and be able to narrow things down. So I'll set that aside and I guess I'll show you the rearing cage after but let's go to the jars because they're right here. This is jar number two that's just sitting aside for right now. We have jar number one already opened and we have found our 15 beetles. And among these 15 beetles, if you can see, there are there's a nice happy couple over here that still doesn't want to let go. Can you see them, Amanda? Barely. Yeah, I got them. Okay. So we have a few there. And let me grab this. We also have one male here that we wanted to show you how we handle them, and he's being a little bit rambunctious. So 
He's, they just got out of their jar and they haven't had enough food, so he's kind of trying to look for more food. I don't know if you can see him in here, but when we do a jar, we have to find all 15 of these among this many branches. So it takes us a little while. Um, you know, I actually got done with ours this morning in less than 10 minutes, which is unbelievable, but we just got lucky because we knew we were going to do this. So there he is, and that actually wasn't one of those. <laughs> We had an escapee. So we have a male on there, and this one is probably a female, judging by the size, because the females are a significant amount larger. Here is the male that I added. So we'll let him continue to eat. These are the eggs. And as I said before, I label them. So this is top, middle, and bottom. We do that so that if we have too many eggs, we can narrow down how many we put in a rearing cage. If you can zoom in on this, Amanda, I don't know. It's probably easiest if I leave it flat. All of those little red dots are beetle eggs. And if my estimation is correct, that's between 100 and 125 eggs. Um, it could even be more than that, but that's what my guess would be. And it looks like this one has some clumps, so it's probably about the same. So we're, this is going to be a very good jar. We're probably going to hit about 400 eggs total. So, Just to give you an idea of what tools we use, if we're looking for beetles and we have one that's clearly not behaving, we'll look underneath this and we have a nice good magnifier and we can see all of the branches underneath much bigger and uh, we can also see some adelgid characteristics as well a microscope of course we need for sexing beetles um, which is a long and arduous process we only do that once or twice a year uh, and only when necessary uh, we do do that before the summer as well just to make sure that we don't have any rearing going on during the summer months when we need to keep production low since the food quality is also low. Okay, I'm going to show you one of those rearing boxes and then we're done for today. Let's get this one. Alright, here's one of our rearing cages and I'll allow Amanda to pan around. And basically, just a description, this is our feeding chart. Every day, in the beginning, they get 50 twigs in here of hemlock woolly adelgid branches. We distinguish what kind of food they got, where it was from, and who did the actual feeding, so that we can keep track of that as well. And this is just to minimize any kind of error. This is the estimated amount of beetles. It's good to note that we always estimate in the customer's favor at Tree Savers. I always make sure that there is a much larger amount, 25 to 50 extra beetles in every cage, just in case there's any reason. I've never shipped a dead beetle, but if anything ever happened, you can assure that you're being accounted for. And I think, let's see, one more cage you can look through. I don't know if you can see any larva, Amanda. Look. They have been active, but that was because they were hungry, so I added some food to their cages. And I think that they are quite happily fed. I only see a few, and they're too far away for you to zero in. They're in the back corner. How about this one? Can you see him? I know it's a little dark there. Yeah, you got him. <laughs> that little guy is one of our friends. He is a beetle larva. So we're on our way. We've had these in our cages all week, and uh, we're expecting to have pupa soon. Thank you.